namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa good afternoon everyone Last week we talk about samatha. <coughs> so this samatha literally means uh, serenity or tranquility, right? Normally we normally use tranquility. The people body use serenity. I think both are good, right? Either way we can use the samatha. So if we practice samatha, we will have serenity of the mind or tranquility of the mind so this is uh, the power of samatha actually samatha is sometimes used uh, very often used as a samadhi samadhi uh, samadhi means taking the object very firmly so when you are practicing breathing meditation so you take breathing object firmly. So when you are practicing uh, recollection of the quality of the Buddha, so you trying to take the quality of the Buddha very firmly in your mind. So that is called Samadhi. So actually Abhidharma, we use it Ekagata, right? Abhidharma, we use it Ekagata. So Ekagata is uh, divided into two what? Eka and Aka. Eka me one. Aka me the object. So when you are when you want to have the serenity of the mind or tranquility of the mind, so we have to take one object very firmly, right? So in that way you will have a uh, have a very strong um, tranquility of the mind, right? So that is samatha. So actually, uh, samatha and jhanas are the same. So samatha and samadhi are the same, right? So today we will learn about vipassana. So what is vipassana? It is in according with the Pali Canon, right? In according with the Pali Canon. Vipassana is described as a, the higher wisdom of insight into phenomena. The insight into phenomena. That is called Vipassana. So really the, the Soda said that Adipanya Dhamma Vipassana. So vipassana me insight. So a deep in me higher wisdom. The dharma me here not teaching, not teachings of the Buddha. So dharma me intrinsic nature, or we call it here phenomena. I don't know phenom the word phenomena convey that meaning. Generally, the dharma is by wider meaning. So everything can be called dharma. Our mind can be called da dharma, then our body, and everything in our s in environment, even the nibbana. So we can use the dharma. So here, dharma means not the teachings of the Buddha. Here means phenomena or intrinsic nature. So therefore, in Satipatthana Soda, we, we use dharma nubhasana, right? Here, Dhamma Nupasana means not recollection of the Dhamma or teachings of the Buddha. It means the recollect, uh, how to say, contemplation of the phenomena. Right? Contemplation of the phenomena. 
So here, Vipassana means insight into phenomena. So we have to use our wisdom, our insight to analyze natural phenomena, to analyze our mind, to analyze our body and everything. So that is called Vipassana. So actually, Samatha do not analyze, right? Just uh, focus on object. In this way, you have a tranquility of the mind, right? But of course, we best now have to rely on tranquility of the mind or calmness of the mind. So based on calmness of the mind, so we analyze. So let's we I I give you one example, right? Very stable pool, right? Stable pools. First, first of all, to see things inside, so we have to try to stable, stabilize the pool or calm the pool, the water in the pool. So then only we'll be able to see through vipassana, right? So therefore, uh, samatha is very important. So before we practice vipassana. So here, dharma phenomena. So another we call it Sankara. Sankara means condition phenomena. So here yeah, when we talk about Dharma, it is including Nibbana is included in the Dharma. So when we talk about Sankara, Nibbana is excluded. So actually Nibbana is not included because the Nibbana is unconditioned, unconditioned. Not conditioned by any causes. It exists. You know that the, the bliss of Nibbana exists. We cannot see where. Huh? We cannot see where. Just like uh, uh, we cannot actually very difficult to compare. So when you only when we have uh, Sotapati, Maga and Fala, Sakaragami, Anagami, Arata, Maga and Fala. So then only we are able to experience, right? So just like uh, uh, we, uh, we, we use our mind to experience, right? Happiness. And also we can use, sometimes we can use uh, Panchakanda, five aggregates. So all these are the same, right? So let's talk about Vipassana. So this is a very famous uh, verse in Buddhism. Sapi Sankara Anichadi Yata Panyaya Pasati Atane Bendati Toki Isa Mako Visodiya. So this is from Dhammapada and also from Tiragata. So, wow, <laughs> need a little bit. All conditioned phenomena are impermanent. So when one sees this with the inside wisdom, so one becomes disenchanted with the suffering. So this is the path to purity. The very meaningful and also very philosophical. So as I said uh, one time, so if you understand this verse with your insight, you become sort of panna. <laughs> yes, uh, all condition phenomena are impermanent. Right? Impermanent. So as I said here, Sankara. So Nibbana is not included here. So everything is impermanent. Right? Except from Nibbana, right? So we can say Nibbana is permanent. Right? So, um, even uh, supra mundane consciousness, like in Mecca and Fala, right? So even those supra mundane consciousness, they are impermanent. So when we talk about Sankara, conditioned phenomena, that means everything, every mental and material phenomena, including supra, uh, supra mundane consciousness, right? Local Dracheta. So everything is impermanent. So we can also translate as a, all, everything is impermanent. So when one sees this 
with the inside wisdom. So inside wisdom is we person here. Panyaya basati. Actually, panyaya me indicate the word weak, weak, weak person, right? Person seeing with the wisdom. So when you understand about your mind, about your body, and every material phenomena. So everything is impermanent. So when you know, when you know this reality, you become disenchanted with uh, disenchanted with the suffering. Here, the Buddha used the word dhoka. Here, dhoka means not natural dhoka. So actually, dhoka here means five aggregate. So the Buddha said that uh, any type of feeling is suffering. So we are very happy, right, to see our beloved people. We are very happy to hear good news, right? Even such type of feeling are suffering. But of course, when, when we look at from bottom, we do not know. But when you arrive at the Anagami level, so even Sukha, even Sukha is suffering, right? Suffering. So I will explain you a little bit later. So, so therefore, first we need to develop tranquility or serenity. So we have to develop samatha. So if we have a stable tranquility, so we can practice vipassana. So we, uh, you use your wisdom, you analyze the nature of your mind. So when the in mind arises you're mindful and you 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 understand that the mind arises so that mind will disappear so you you your wisdom wow that state of mind disappear so the moment you are practicing pure samatha you do not use your wisdom you just focus on right the object but when you practice vipassana you have to use your wisdom, inside wisdom. So mind, in my moment, arise and disappear. And uh, the material phenomena arises and disappear. So when you have um, a stable concentration, then you can see what is happening in your body. Actually, the body is composed of tiny, you know, millions and billions of tiny materials, small, you know, particles. So you will be able to see those realities, right? But for those who become sort of panna, they understand this way. All conditioned phenomena are impermanent. So therefore, but as a sort of panna, uh, he, he cannot recognize that pleasant feeling is suffering. He doesn't know. But he, he, he knows a little bit of what he knows a little bit. But only for those become sort of Sakatagami, second level, he know that even, even pleasant feeling is suffering. Even pleasant feeling is suffering. So as you know, um, so you may know that uh, Sotapana, for those who become Sotapana, he uh, removed wrong view, right? Wrong view. So wrong view me, my mind exists, right? Then my body, actually, uh, as a normal people, you know, we also think that, right? I exist. Like this, right? So we have a wrong view. So when you become sort of panna, you understand the nature of impermanence. So if you become the nature of impermanence, so you are disenchanted with the real suffering. So we have a three types of suffering. So uh, we call it toka toka, the natural suffering, right? So the weather is very hot, suffering. So you are uh, severely ill, right? Suffering. So, so whatever you experience with your body and mind, uh, especially with the body, that's suffering, right? 
natural suffering. So second one is the Vibrina Matoka, the suffering in change. So normally you have a happy feeling, right? Happy feeling. So that happy feeling doesn't exist. It will change. So therefore, the happy feeling is called Vibrina Matoka. Uh, suffering in change. Very difficult to accept, right? Very difficult. But think about our life, right? Actually, uh, the happiness what we have, you know, today is very short, right? Very short. It's subject to change. Normally, I give an uh, example of uh, taking holiday trip, right? So when you are when you are taking holiday trip, very happy, huh? but you relieve from your uh, hard work, right? But when you come back, you have to do it again. <laughs> you have to do it in the office, hard work, right? Actually, uh, the pleasure of holiday trip is a vibrina matoka, suffering in change, right? Suffering in change. So actually, uh, Sakatagami in second level, he understand this one. Normally, we think that our body is really beautiful. The body of other people are beautiful. The Sodapana stay see this one, cannot remove that wrong view. We call it uh, Sanya Vipanasa. Sanya Vipanasa means um, uh, illusion or or perception, illusion of perception. So when someone became Sakataka, uh, sorry, uh, Sakataka, uh, I want to say, once retainer, right? Second, second, second. So when someone became Sakataka, he removed that wrong perception. His body is, uh, I want to say, repulsive or not beautiful also the body of other people not beautiful for that reason he becomes disenchanted even with the beautiful things disenchanted or disappointed so if someone is disenchanted no longer attached to that right no longer attached Suppose you go to one place that you do not like, you, 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 you became disenchanted with that place. You no longer want to go there, right? Just like that. So before we think that, um, uh, uh, we think that our body is beautiful and also the body of other people are beautiful. But when he has a very, very strong serenity of the mind, and he used inside wisdom that he see the real nature of you know those things the reality so from then on he becomes disenchanted with the suffering he has suffering me uh, we bring namatoka suffering in change in other words uh, pleasant feeling right pleasant feeling so for those who become nagami uh, of course, they have a, a you know, deeper level of concentration, a deeper level of samatha. Then he can analyze everything, his body and the bedding, everything. So normally he see uh, the bedding, Mangala Vihara is composed of, you know, the million and billions of uh, material particles. He also see the body like this. Actually, um, even in the minds of Anagami and non retainer he still have wrong perception. So that is called Chaita Vipanlasa. Chaita means uh, illusion of the mind. Illusion of the mind. Illusion of the mind. So that uh, Chaita Vipanlasa, illusion of the mind, is removed only he began uh, every hand, right? So therefore, the different uh, different degree of you know wisdom. So here, 
uh, if you understand, if you understand uh, the natural suffering, right? Natural suffering. So if you really understand with your, you know, inside wisdom, as I said, not from the book, right? Not from the talk. <laughs> By your own realization, through your serenity of the mind, then inside wisdom. So you understand that. So you, you no longer want to see. If you become sort of panna, then you, you don't have a deity <coughs> way palace, the illusion of wrong view, right? Illusion of the wrong view. So therefore, for those who become sort of panna, he becomes selfless, selfless, right? So what I want to say is uh, the nature of vipassana here is, is talk about vipassana. Panyaya Pasati here. Second line, Panyaya Pasati. So here, so when we translate this one, when one sees this, this means all condition phenomena impermanent. All things are impermanent. So here, if we say all things is not correct, so we have to use we have to use conditioned, right? So if we use all things, that means including nibbana, right? Nibbana. Nibbana is not impermanent. Nibbana actually, uh, we use Bali dua, not nature. So dua means uh, it exists permanently. So. It, if I say like this, you, may, you might think that it exists somewhere else, not like this, right? So only we have um, uh, supramanic consciousness, we can experience the bliss of Nibbana. So the bliss of Nibbana, as I, uh, even less we I explain that. So Nibbana doesn't have any feeling, right? Any feeling. You know, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, any feeling. So if you do not have feeling, is happening real place, right? Real place. So here, see this nature with the inside wisdom. So that is uh, vipassana, right? That's vipassana. So one becomes disenchanted with the suffering. Here, yeah, suffering me with three types of suffering. Another one is called uh, uh, sankara toka. Sankara me. Um, Condition, condition suffering, right? Condition suffering. So according to Abhidhamma, a neutral feeling is a, in the Sankara Toka, right? So this is uh, how someone becomes Sodapana. So anyone, so the king or the beggar, or the man, anyone who becomes sort of Pāyāna. Pāli Kāna usually mentions these lines, right? So this is from the first sermon. So when the first sermon, the first discourse was being delivered, the dust-free, stainless vision of the Dharma arose in the Venerable Kornenya. As you know, so the Bora preached the first sermon and a man then so Kornenya is the oldest, right? So he became Sotapanna first, the first day. Then second day, Wapa, right? I, I don't know in, in sequence. So actually one by one they became Sotapanna. So, so how he became Sotapanna? So wherever is subject to arising, wherever is subject to arising, is all subject to cessation. Let's talk about nature, right? If something has the nature arising, right? Because normally our mind arises, right? So the mind has the nature arising. So therefore, it has the nature of suffering. So wherever it's subject to arising is all subject to cessation. So here, if you understand this one, this also we best enough. Because without using our inside wisdom, we do not see. So however you attain a deeper level of samatha, 
However, you attain the deepest level of jhana if you, you know, if you do not use inside wisdom or if you do not use vipassana, you cannot be cancelled the panel, right? So if you have a deeper level of concentration, you can attain jhanas, but you cannot attain uh, supramantine consciousness. But only you practice vipassana, you will be cancelled the panel, right? So therefore, it is the nature of vipassana. Here, here, Dhamma is not, not the teachings of the Buddha. It is the, how to say, the phenomena. Whatever phenomena has the nature arising. So all these phenomena are, are, the nature, are the nature of cessation, right? So the nature of impermanence. So if things are impermanent, it is suffering. So if things are impermanent and suffering, it is non-self, non-self, right? So therefore, all well, three characteristics of, uh, uh, how to say, the existence, right? Three characteristics of existence are link each other, link each other. This is the example of Samatha and Vipassana. <laughs> as you know, uh, here, the samatha is compared as a catching of the fish by a crane. So it just concentrates on one focal point to catch only one fish. So the nature of vipassana. So as you know, so when we practice vipassana, uh, sorry, samatha, so we focus on one object. Normally, uh, so when you are practicing, as I said, the breathing meditation, so you are, your focal point is the breath, right? So the breath is compared as a fish, right? Normally the crane doesn't look at uh, many places. Just look at, right? Just like a dead body standing, looking at one place. If a fish came out, catch it. So this is the nature of person, right? Sorry, the nature of samatha. It's very stable, just like a crane. So therefore, if your body and your mind is stable and also tranquil, you have a peace of mind, a peace of mind. So therefore, uh, scientific uh, survey said that for those who are religious, so they, they have a long life. <laughs> so the reason is, you know, they will, they, they will attend, you know, chantings. So as a Christian, they will attend church, right? So their mind is focused on the religious scriptures. For that reason, they have a peace of mind, right? Peace of mind. So therefore, we need to balance between samatha and vipassana, right? If you are just uh, using your own wisdom, you are analyzing, so is it right or wrong, right or wrong? If you are doing just that, you don't have a stability of the mind. You don't have faith, right? So therefore, we need to combine with the faith and wisdom. So here, samatha is a concentrate on one focal point, right? Actually, this is a talk by Sarah Ucheke. He's very famous meditation master in Myanmar. A very beautiful one. So I do not see. I do not have any reference for that. I think. Uh, he is very clever in conversation, so he's, uh, he explains some difficult, uh, difficult subject in a simple way. So he's very famous uh, in conversation, very clever in conversation. What about vipassana? Vipassana is just like a catching of insect by a spider. You know, a spider stay at the middle of the spider web, right? And when there, you know, if there, uh, you know, is, um, the insect is caught somewhere of its web, and he will go there and catch it. He will go there and catch it. Normally, um, here, the spider stay at the middle of the web. Me, he stay with the stability of the mind. Samatha. Staying at the middle is samatha. Actually, if 
an insect uh, caught somewhere, and he will go there and catch it. And east direction, north direction, like anywhere. He just stay at the middle, right? So that means uh, normally, so when we went to practice with Basana, so we have to uh, develop serenity of the mind, or samatha. That is something happening in our mind. So we have to use our wisdom, inside wisdom. Then we know the nature of the mind. If something happens in our body, and we know, we, we use our wisdom, inside wisdom. We know what is happening in our body. So that is the nature of vipassana, right? The nature of vipassana. So vipassana use inside wisdom to analyze, to, to investigate uh, the mind and body, the mind and material phenomena. So therefore, in the seven factors of enlightenment, Bojanga, so the Buddha used Dhamma, Vijaya, Sambhujanga. Dhamma, Vijaya, here Dhamma is not the teaching. The Dhamma is a phenomena, the same thing, phenomena. So Vijaya means analyzing or investigation. So investigate the phenomena. The phenomena means fire aggregate. In other words, mind and matter, right? Mind and matter. So here, the spider stay at the middle of the spider web, right? Something happened in his web, so he will go there and catch it. He know it. He know it, right? I don't know whether it is true or not. So they actually, this uh, so this is not the same simile analogy the Buddha gave. Actually, the Buddha compare uh, a spider just like a craving. A uh, spider is just like a craving. So when we see something, the craving arises. So when we touch something, craving arises. When we eat something, craving arises. Craving know it. The Buddha uh, equate craving with the spider, uh, a spider. Because it, um, just like a spider, spider will, will catch insect in his web. So just like that, we, we see something, we hear something, we smell, we taste, we touch, we think, right? So then we try to catch it, we try to catch it, right? This is the nature of craving. But Seado, Seado Uchekeda, he used um, Vipassana with the spider. It's a very beautiful analogy, right? Actually, uh, this one is much more interesting. And the same, you know, Seado Uchekeda, the same thing. He said that Samatha is just like a watching a movie with this VCD player. <laughs> So we can choose wherever fun you like, then you have to stick, you can stick to that, right? You don't need to move, move uh, you don't need to change or uh, just watch it, right? Just watch it. It is Samatha. You choose one, uh, one movie, then whether you like it, uh, the breathing meditation or the recollection of the quality of the Buddha or or re reversiveness of the body like this, anything, right? Anything you choose, then you have to stick to that. Stick to that. So that is called samatha. So we persona is just like a watching a live show from TV. So you have to watch wherever on air, even advertisement. <laughs> no choice, right? Advertisement. If if you are watching a live show. There is advertisement you have, uh, you, you, don't, you cannot skip, right? You cannot skip. So just watch it, just enjoy it. This is a vipassana. Sometimes you may not like it. So even previous verse, the Buddha said that disenchanted, right? So disenchanted with the uh, uh, aggregate, fire aggregate. Wherever you see, wherever you hear anything, right? You may be disappointed, but you have to stay watch it, right? Stay watch it. So that is a vipassana. So, uh, 
we have to observe wherever the mind and the body and also external circumstances display. It's very important one. So samatha is stable or tranquil. Uh, tranquil. So based on samatha, we have to use our own wisdom or insight. So we have to use our insight to analyze, to, to investigate the nature of mind and matter. So that is Vipassana, right? So therefore, so there are many disputes that uh, Sam Maritisha uh, said that without jhana, you cannot, you cannot uh, practice Vipassana to attain supramundane consciousness, right? And Sam, uh, Sam Meditation Master said that we can get without jhana like that, right? So, so many dispute. So this is uh, the nature of samatha and vipassana. I hope you understand the definition of samatha and vipassana. Any question? No question? I hope. Sorry? You recite? So actually, um, even we can use in our daily life, right? Suppose when you are visiting the wake, so you can use your inside wisdom. So one day I must die, right? I'm also the nature of death. You use your own wisdom. Even that one we can call it, uh, of course, this is a very low level of vipassana, right? So as long as we are using our wisdom or our insight to analyze the nature of impermanence and through this understanding so we we try to investigate the nature of suffering right then the nature of non self so that can be called vipassana right even our daily life for those who have who can <coughs> for those who can who can use their wisdom who can use their insight wisdom they has they have less suffering right less suffering something changes in your life in your life something changes then if you can use your insight wisdom less suffering actually uh, the way Buddhism use is very straightforward. So we're trying to understand the real nature, the reality. What is the real nature of mind and material phenomena? Then we're trying to see the real nature of things. They're trying to understand it, trying to accept it. So in this way, release. Our mind is liberated from those reality. Liberated. Even though the changes in our, in our life happening, we know that this is the reality. This is the reality. Because normally we cannot accept, right? We cannot accept. So therefore, if we do not know the reality, in other words, if we do not know the real nature, impermanent, suffering, and non self that means we have ignorance. So actually ignorance means uh, we do not, not know in the reality, right? So if, if we said that ignorance means not knowing for noble truth, you may not understand, right? You may not understand very clearly. So actually ignorance means not knowing the real nature of mind and material phenomena. That's all. That's ignorance. So that means if we have mindfulness, 
if we have inside wisdom, so that means no ignorance in our mind, right? So if you maintain mindfulness, if you maintain inside knowledge, one minute, that means you don't have ignorance one minute. But if you can extend 10 minutes, not easy. 10 minutes, that means no ignorance, right? Normally we are full of ignorance all the time. We are not mindful, right? Mindful. <coughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Let okay. So sorry that I do not know. <laughs> so I have to ask scientists. Yeah, I think I I don't really don't know. You know, no. even the Tao do not know. <laughs> Actually, uh, of course, I think that um, scientists may know it, right? Scientists may know it. But of course, I will say that if you really in a deeper level of concentration. I think uh, you probably know it. You will know it, I think, right? Know it. Okay, let's go. <coughs> so now we have been learning 10 basis of meritorious deed. So the first group is dana, right? Dana under dana, we have a sharing of merit rejoicing in other merit. So these are considered as a, and a, you know, the, uh, giving, a dana. So dana simply means giving. So wherever you get to sem someone, so that is called dana, right? <coughs> That's called dana. So you can do dana with the one of the eight type of hosen deed, right? Eight, eight type of hosen deed. So that is called Sense fear, Hosan consciousness, right? Sometimes you may do dana with the accompanied by joy, right? Sometimes you may do dana without joy. <laughs> Sometimes you may do it um, accompanied by wisdom, right? Accompanied by knowledge. Sometimes without knowledge. Sometimes higher degree of volition. Sometimes lesser degree of manipulation. So we do, you know, uh, uh, you know, one of the eight type of, <coughs> with the one of the eight type of uh, wholesome consciousness. So there is dana, so we have learned it. Regarding with the dana, not a problem, right? And sila, <coughs> so we have so many definite, so many translations. Some people actually uh, last night I I I'm perf uh, I look at a one, one website, so they translate sila as a ethical behavior, ethical be behavior, and very beautiful one. So dana sila, so sila literally means immoral contact or ethical behavior. So the main point is we have to control our body and speech. Two reasons. So in order to in order not to do any evil deeds. Number one. And number two, to do good things. So therefore we can say that do's and don'ts are two aspects of sila. So refraining from an old thing is not actually it is a talk, right? Not to do it. So furthermore, we have to do a good, good things, right? Good things with our body, with our body. So man then, respect. So by, we have to show our respect with our speeches and also with our body, right? That's also regarded with the sila. I think not, not, not difficult because it's related to body and speech, right? Body and speech. Another one is service, we are watching. So you have to use your, bo your body 
And also, some people do not use their body, they use their voices, their speeches, right? But even though we normally see a lip, lip service, right? Lip service. Lip service. <laughs> but it's also very necessary, right? Some people, they want to do their, with their body, no? But they cannot speak. They, they, they do not, they are, they, they feel shy, you know, to speak among the people. So therefore, also, the people who do this service are also very important, right? So, service also under the seal, under the seal. Actually, if you want to practice service, we are Wasa, the right time. Actually, we have a Wasa celebration <laughs> next month. Uh, May 10, right? May 10. So we, we have so many, uh, so many things to do. So I think we were, Mangala, we had always so many vegetarian food, and also coffee and cold drinks. And also we distribute free book. Also we do a lot of things. So I think uh, we normally estimate uh, four, four or five thousand people will visit. So, we need a lot of volunteers. So if you are interested, so uh, we will, you know, our teacher Lily will announce right later, right? Okay. So you can write this service next month, right? So actually, wherever we do sila, so we do with one of the eight consciousness, right? One of the consciousness. Sometimes you do it happily, sometimes you do it unhappily. Sometimes you use your wisdom, sometimes you do not. Sometimes full of motivation, sometimes less of motivation, right? So this is a uh, sila. Next one is meditation. Actually meditation, so we can, uh, we have a, I want to say, we have to divide meditation. So, um, and our meditation, you know, hearing the Dharma or listening to the Dharma, also regarded as a meditation because we have to develop mindfulness, right? So when you are listening the lessons, right? The Dharma talk, so you have to be mindful. So that, that means you are developing your mindfulness and also your wisdom, right? So therefore, it is regarded, hearing the Dhamma is regarded as a meditation. I know, teaching the Dhamma. Of course, why I'm teaching, I have to be mindful. Otherwise, no, actually, whatever I said will be meaningless. So therefore, teaching the Dhamma also under the meditation. And then straightening out one's views, also regarded as a meditation. So, meditation is a development of serenity of the mind, samatha, and the insight into phenomena, vipassana. Really, simply speaking, it is a continual cultivation of mindfulness. A very simple way. Meditation is a continual mindfulness. Wherever you do, wherever you speak, so wherever you are, uh, you do any time, right? So you can cultivate mindfulness. So therefore, meditation can be practiced anywhere, anytime, right? Anytime. As long as you are mindful, so that means you are meditating, right? So, regarding with some time we person up, so before one attain jhanas, so one of the eight sense fear wholesome consciousness is taking place whenever one practice samatha. So suppose you are practicing samatha, you are attending puja. So before you attain jhana, so you are before you attain jhana, right? So you are. Uh, you, you are doing those wholesome deeds with the one of the eight wholesome consciousness. Sense fear, wholesome consciousness. So that is a such type of samatha is called sense fear samatha. We can call it sense fear 
samatha. But the moment you attain jhana, it no longer, it no longer, you know, became, uh, it no longer, uh, since we are samatha, it became, we call it rupa or arupa jhana, right? Rupa or arupa jhana. So after, after that, we will learn this one, jhana. Before one attain one of the four mega chaitas, four mega chaitas. So one of the uh, you are doing one of the eight sense fear wholesome consciousness is taking place. I don't know actually. Uh, I don't know my grammatical right. <laughs> taking place whenever one practice with person. Suppose so you are practicing with person. So before you attain supra mundane consciousness, three not only maka but also phala, right? We have eight uh, supra mundane consciousness. So before you attain those consciousness, so whatever you would, uh, whenever you are practicing vipassana, that means you are you are doing one of the eight sense fear wholesome consciousness. One of the eight sense fear wholesome consciousness. So at the same time, so when you are meditating, whether it is samatha vipassana, sometimes you do with the joy, right? Sometimes you do with the knowledge. Sometimes you do with the high, higher or lesser degree of motivation, right? I think it's quite clear, right? Quite clear. So this is the eight sense fear for some consciousness. Normally in Bhami's class, I let them read, read, uh, read lot, read it lot, so that uh, they can memorize. They can memorize. Would you like to do it? Yeah. Huh? When you are when you are reciting, do it mindfully, right? In that way, you are uh, you know you, you you know you know when we are when when I'm referring to right. One consciousness accompanied by joy associated with the knowledge and granted. One consciousness accompanied by joy associated with the knowledge granted. One consciousness accompanied by joy dissociated from knowledge and granted. One consciousness accompanied by joy dissociated from knowledge granted. One consciousness accompanied by equanimity associated with the knowledge unprompted. One consciousness accompanied by equanimity associated with the knowledge granted. One consciousness Accompanied by equanimity, dissociated from knowledge, unprompted. One consciousness, accompanied by equanimity, dissociated from knowledge, prompted. I hope, I think it's very important to know. So, a type of sense fear holds consciousness, right? So, the first four with the joy, right? Accompanied by joy. So the last four accompanied by equanimity. The simile of thought. Up to now, we have been learning, uh, we have learned um, Tre and Hosan consciousness, right? Tre and Hosan consciousness. And also, we have learned AT rootless consciousness. And also we have learned 24 sense fear, beautiful consciousness. Altogether, 54. So man then, sorry, no, not yet, no? We still need to learn another uh, 16. So up to now, what I want to say is, up to now we have been learning uh, Tre Ahosan consciousness. Tre Ahosan consciousness. So now we have learned eight Sense fear, wholesome consciousness. Eight sense fear, wholesome consciousness. 
So when we are doing unwholesome things, we do with one or the three unwholesome consciousness. So when we are doing good things, we do with one of the four or eight sense fear wholesome consciousness. Actually, this soda is really beautiful. Lornaka Pala Soda, the simile of salt. In Gautam Nikaya, chapter 3, soda number 100. What did you see? What do you see? The salt and a glass of water are uh, uh, a cup of salt, right? Salt. So in this soda, simile is really beautiful. Uh, the Buddha is talking that, uh, how do you say, that the, the theory of good impact karma. Theory of good impact karma. So in that soda, the Buddha gave a simile of salt. So you see that a glass of water. So when you, when you put all the salt in the, in the glass of water, what happened? Very salty. Cannot drink, right? Cannot drink. How about when you put that salt into the river, what happened? Nothing will happen. No changes, right? Just a little bit a tripling, right? It's just a little bit of changes. So the Buddha gave that example. And some people do a little bit of unwholesome deed. They can go to hell. Some people, they do the same thing, a little bit of bad deed, but they have a little bit of reset in this life. So that uh, bad deed will not produce rebirth in hell. The difference is, the Buddha gave the, Buddha gave the reason so many people have done a lot of good deed, right? One people, one person has done a lot of good deed. Sometimes he may do a little bit of good, uh, bad things, right? So that bad deed were not making so much different. Of course, there will be a little bit of, uh, you know, a happy reset. Just like a, when we put the salt, into the river, not much different, right? But some people, they do not have good deed, just a little bit of good deed, just like a glass of water. Then he do a little bit of bad deed, then it reset, rebound in hell. The different, right? So therefore, we cannot say that you do good deed, you will have the same reset, cannot. It depends on a lot of conditions, right? It depends on a lot of conditions. I think it's very beautiful soda. I think uh, you should go and read this soda. Regarding with the karma, right? So actually, even though we do the same amount of unwholesome deed, but the result may be different. It depends how amount of wholesome deed in your mind, right? In your mind. So therefore, so the reset of karma is very difficult to think about. It, ha you know, it has a lot of conditions. So we have to think about a lot of conditions, right? So in this soda, the Buddha gave example, beautiful example. Some people steal uh, one Singapore dollar, supposed. One person steal one Singapore dollar, and he may go to jail. I think it's better to give example in India, <laughs> not in Singapore. <laughs> the Buddha gave example in India, right? So some people steal, you know, ten dollars, about ten dollars, and he he was caught and he sent to the jail because of this ten dollar. And rich people, very rich people, they steal the same ten dollar, right? Even more than ten dollar, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Just like that, right? So therefore, many people here, not only here, I think many Buddhists, I think they are afraid of the last stop movement. 
Let's talk moment. I think we shouldn't worry about the last talk moment. We should worry about now and the present moment, right? How much, uh, how much amount of uh, good deed you have done? You have to think about it, right? So if you have done a lot of good deed, you don't need to worry about the little moment, right? You don't need to worry. You don't need to worry. So given this example, right? The seemly of sort is very beautiful and also famous one, right? Today I want to teach a very this one a very beautiful one. The three sectarian tennis. This is also from Ingotra Nikaya, chapter three, Sura number sixty-one. So actually this is from uh, I'm not quoting directly the Sota, but uh, using uh uh Beku Astamiga, Bande Astamiga. As you know, I think you all know that he's very famous. Australian man, right? He just went back home last January. And he, he used the word retire. <laughs> of course, he had been doing a lot of missionary works in Singapore. He went to retire. Especially, he went to use uh, most of the time for himself, especially meditation. I think it's a very good idea, very good idea. We should think about ourselves as well, right? Normally, we think that uh, we will live forever. Normally, we, we think that as if we are not going to die, right? And then we should think, we should reserve for ourselves as well. So, actually, I copy, um, I use his, uh, his writing from A Guide to Buddhism, A to Set. Determinism is the belief that an individual's destiny is fixed and that he or she must act accordingly. Actually, um, we have a wrong view, even Buddhist. So actually, the Buddha gave two types of determinism in Pali Canon, in this soda. Uh, in Pali, data retina soda, uh, three satirian tennis. So, even the Bodhis, we have one type of wrong view in this teaching. But most of the follower of the religions, they have another one, another one. So, actually, um, determinism, so our destiny is fixed. That means we cannot change. So we have to act accordingly. So that is a determinism. So the Buddha said two types of determinism. Number one, commit determinism. Pope katahedu. Everything we experience, pleasant or painful or neutral, is due to our past karma. That is how we act in the past. So normally, as the Buddhists, we uh, we always want to say then that this is because of my own past karma. This is my karma. I cannot do anything like this, right? We have uh, such a wrong view. Wrong view me. Uh, if we just think that this happened because of my past karma, because of just because of my past karma. That's wrong view. Not only because of past karma, but also many conditions, many factors. It may be because of karma, what, what we do right now, right? Right now. Like this. So this is also one of the right view, rather wrong, sorry, wrong view. Suppose whatever we do, whether it's good akusala or kusala, good or anhosan uh, or hosandit. So we, if you are thinking like this, so this is uh, because of my past karma. It happened because of my past karma. That's a type of wrong view. Commit determination. So that means in your mind, you think that I cannot change it, right? I cannot change it. Actually, uh, our effect, present effect, resent, happened because of many conditions, right? 
It can be because of past karma. Uh, also, the present karma as well, right? A lot of conditions. Also, another wrong view. The next one is theistic determinism. Esarat neimana hetu. God knows and controls everything, and thus has determined everything before it has happened. So we bodies are very lucky that we don't have this this type of wrong view, <laughs> wrong view, right? But even the bodies, there may be because some believe are uh, very uh, external God and goddesses, right? External God and goddesses. So if you think that. So something happened because of those God and goddesses. They also wrong you. So it's also determinism. Theistic determinism, right? So this happened uh, most of the people from outside of Buddhism. According to Buddha, both, both those ideas are not just false, but also pernicious, dangerous. It's also dangerous. And the way he writes very beautiful by the Astamika. Determinism means that the individual cannot choose one cause of action over another. That means no choose, no choice, have to bear it, right? Cannot make an effort to change anything. Also, he is not responsible for it. Because something happened, because of past karma, because of God created it, right? God created. Such a belief can only lead to irresponsibility. Don't blame me, it is the will of God. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for Buddhists and antipathy. So what can I do? It is my past karma. This is also wrong view, right? So you have, you know, a uh, bad reset or or but you have to do, you, you can change it, right? You can change it, right? You can change it. So I think uh, these two, this sort of also very, really interesting to learn about karma. So whether it is good or bad, right? So according to Buddhism, every unwholesome deed and wholesome deed depend on ourselves, right? We did. We did wholesome and wholesome deed, and we will have reset. So therefore here, when we are, we, we, we are learning Abhidharma, we know the cause, right? The cause of the root of unwholesome or wholesome deed. So three unwholesome consciousness at the root of all unwholesome deed. But now we have been learning eight type of sense fear wholesome consciousness. So whatever we, whatever we do good things, before we attain jhana, before we attain supramanic consciousness. So these are because of eight sense fear, wholesome and consciousness, right? Any question? Let's finish Kusala Chaita, right? Kusala Chaita, wholesome and consciousness. So this one is another one, three satirianness. Actually, some people have a wrong view, non-causality. Everything happens without a cause or condition. Even the scientists, they may have this type of wrong view, right? <laughs> Communics, they may have this one. No cause, it happened by chance, right? It happened by chance, like this. <clears throat> now, eight since fear, Resident consciousness. Eight sense fear, resident consciousness. Both eight rootless wholesome consciousness. So we have been learning rootless consciousness, right? So we have a rootless wholesome consciousness. Sorry. Rootless wholesome resident consciousness. So here, eight sense fear, resident consciousness. With the root. So the first one is without root.
So the last one is, uh, the second one is with the root. The very important one. So uh, the receptor A sense fear holds and consciousness. So when you are doing eight holds and consciousness, and you will have a type four reset. So a type of reset, we can have a two type. One is rootless. We have land, right? We have land. Another one is with the roots, with the roots. So I think uh, to understand this one, I think we need to understand uh, mind process, mind process, right? Mind process. So, but those two type of resident chaders, two type of vipaka chaders, yeah? Resident mean vipaka. Vipaka chaders have different functions, different functions, different functions. Actually, uh, the functions we have to learn in third chapter, third chapter. So to know about Vipaka, let's, let's look at um, mind process, page number, page number 155, page number 155. Actually, even though they are the result of Hosan consciousness, but they have different functions, different functions, right? Different functions. So please look at uh, page number 155. Actually, I have explained this one, my process, right? My process. <coughs> so this is a, based on a complete indoor process. Complete indoor process. <coughs> so we have a stream of Bawanga, a pass Bawanga, vibration of Bawanga, and a rest Bawanga, right? The Bawanga stop. Then five door adverting. <coughs> five door advertings. Because a uh, five door me eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body, right? <coughs> five door advertings. So actually five door advertings to determine up to there. These ones are called rootless, right? Rootless. Ahituka, Ahituka. Fido advertence. Then, I consciousness. So, actually, I already explained that uh, we have stream of Bawanga, a lot of Bawanga in our body. So, the Bawanga, or like continuum, are the result of the karma that we have done in the past life. Nothing, nothing connected with in this life, right? So, if you have done good karma, a lot of good deed in this um, previous life, you will have a, a good life continuum, a good bawanga, right? A good bawanga. So a lot of bawanga, stream of bawanga, then if there is a mind process is going to come in, so bawanga have to stop, right? So therefore, fight door advancing, fight door switch, the door is open. Then only I'm consciousness. I'm consciousness also ahetuka, right? So the moment you have uh, these ahetuka chaita, rootless consciousness, there is no hosan or anhosan root. Anhosan root, loba dosa moa, right? Anhosan roots, aloba, adosa, amoha. The moment you have this rootless consciousness. So that means, <coughs> so the moment you have unconsciousness, there's no loba, no dosa, no moha, right? Then you receive, receiving. Then investigate the object and determine. You determine what is it, right? You determine. So up to here, from five door adverting and up to determining. So these are called rootless consciousness, right? I I I I I think that you don't need to. I don't need to explain in. Uh, right? You understand this one. Then after determining the object, you experience right. Jawana, you experience 
force, buying force, with the force, with the force, you fully experience. That's called Javana. But Bhikkhu Bori use uh, running, uh, how to say, sweep, uh, how to say, quick running, right? Bhikkhu Bori use quick running. Actually, it's not like it's not like that. It's not like that. It's a full of force, right? So after determining the object, you experience fully, whether uh, good or bad, right? So here, what I want to say is determining. After determining, jawana. So actually, uh, eight eight type of sense, fear, hope, and consciousness that we have learned. It is Amanda Jawana. Amanda Jawana. So actually we have to land in third chapter in DT, right? For now, just understand that a type of Kusala Cheda, Hosa and Consciousness are Jawana. So that means you determine the object. Suppose um, you are listening the Dharma, right? Then you determine in your mind. So up to that level, there is no Hosan uh, root. No um, aloba, adosa, moha, right? Then you, you determine, then you fully experience the object. The object may, uh, the boys I've been talking, right? The boys I've been talking. You fully experience. So by that time, you have kusala chayda, wholesome consciousness. So that is called jawana. After jawana, two type of registration. Two type of registration. Actually, I uh, need to examine the word registration. It's really, it is really, how to say, uh, confu confusing, right? How do you understand about registration? How do you understand? With the chain? Okay. Normally, registration means we register in our mind, right? We register in our mind. Actually, it's not like that. Bali is called Dharamana. Dharamana tell me uh, the object that Javana is taking. Suppose Javana is, is fully experiencing the object, one object. It can be good and bad, right? It can be good and bad. Dharamana tell me that object. Aramana me taking, taking that object. Following, following that object. Actually, um, uh, the commentary and second commentary mention, I don't know where, the mention that uh, it looked like a, suppose we, we, are, we are riding the boat, or motorboat, motorboat, right? In the river. So when you are riding the river, so, uh, uh, where, how can I explain? I did better show the picture. <laughs> so when you are, uh, you know, the, the boat is running, motorboat is running in the river, right? In the river. Then the water below ran after the motorboat, right? Ran after the motorboat. Javana is like a motorboat. Motorboat, you know? Actually, the water ran after motorboat is just like it, Raramana. Uh, registration, registration. Actually, um, Usila Nana uh, said that is a uh, aftertaste. Aftertaste. So, in the, in the simile I explained, right? The man under the mango tree. After eating, right? After eating. Then he swallow uh, his saliva and uh, everything, right? Actually, eating the mango is jawana. Jawana. We see the object, then we determine, then we fully experience that object. That may be Hosan and Hosan consciousness, right? Hosan and Hosan consciousness. So two registrations actually is a um, is uh, trying to taste that whole and consciousness, right? Just like 
the man, you know, swallowed the saliva. In this way, he, he, he also had, you know, some, some taste, right? Some taste. Just like that. So actually, uh, now we are going, we are learning the eight sense fear, sorry, eight sense fear resident consciousness. Eight sense fear resident consciousness. So actually, it is a, one of the functions is registration. Understand? Registration. And he doesn't have, uh, he, he doesn't have, I want to say, much powerful, it's not so much powerful like a Kusala and Akusala. Hosan and Hosan consciousness. Right? He is just like a, you know, swallowing the saliva after eating the mango tree. Eating mango tree is just like a Hosan and Hosan deed, right? Hosan consciousness. Then after experiencing uh, the object, you, uh, there was a follow-up, follow-up feeling. So that is called um, uh, eight sense fear resident consciousness. Consciousness. Then here, um, we have a different type of functions. Actually, in third chapter, the forty type of functions are mentioned. So the first one is called relinking, relinking function. So in past life, we have done good and bad deeds, right? Normally as a human being, we do good deed. Because of that good deed, uh, we have rebirth in this life. So the first consciousness in this life is called relinking consciousness. So these a type of sense fear resident consciousness functions. So relinking consciousness. Relinking functioning. Function, right? Suppose, so <coughs> according to Abhidharma, so the moment you are going to die, uh, one of the signs appear, one of the objects appear in your mind. Something that you have done in the past. Or thing you are uh, doing right now. Suppose you are going to die, right? Going to die. Then one object, final object appear in your mind. Then uh, the, the, if it is mind or then um, uh, mind advantage, right? If it is a fight or fight advantage. Then uh, receiving, receiving consciousness, investigation consciousness, and determining consciousness. Then after that, Jawana. You trying to, you know, you trying to, how to say, you experience that object fully. If it is a good, good things, then you have a good rebirth. If bad things, bad rebirth, right? So therefore, by listening the Abhidharma concept, People are afraid or oh, less than woman, right? <laughs> actually, it's not so. If we learn uh, uh, Sotas, actually Sotas said that if you are doing a lot of good deed, no need to worry. Even you die at the car accident, no need to worry. <laughs> actually, I have explained, right? One soda, Mahanama soda, right? So actually, the Buddha said that. So if we have done a lot of good deed, even we die in an accident, right? then we don't need to worry because our amount of good is very, very great, right? So here, what I want to say is uh, so eight type of sense via resident consciousness have four functions, four functions. So the first one is the uh, registration, right? I have explained that, registration. Second one is the uh, relinking function. So actually, we do the first type of wholesome consciousness then we will have the first type of uh, resident consciousness in this life. Right? Suppose at the dying bed in past life, so you have a, the first type of wholesome consciousness accompanied by joy, associated with knowledge and, and prompted. 
So when you reborn in this life, you will be always full of joy. Right? Full of joy. As a result of that. Full of joy. And also you are wisdom and you you are intelligent will be higher. Also, whatever you do, you do with the full of motivation, right? Full of motivation. That's the result of actually uh eight sense fear resident consciousness function relinking consciousness right relinking relinking functioning another one is called like continuum like continuum so as i said bawanga that we are experiencing right now is the result of good and bad deed especially the last according to bdm i was seen huh? according to bdm the moment we die and we we experience the first type of wholesome consciousness, right? So as a result of that, the same result. So wherever you experience Bawanga or like continuance, then you will be full of joy. Full of associated with the wisdom or intelligence. And active, you know, active mind or motivation or volition, right? So therefore, a bit of my teacher always said that some people are sleeping <laughs> while they are smiling, you know? They are sleeping with a smile. That means with the joy, right? So manasa, so manasa. So therefore, they say that so we can look at uh, the, 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 our, our bawanga, the type of bawanga, when we are sleeping. So if people are sleeping, um, I want to say, a happy Leo, showing uh, a happy face, right? So that means equanimity, not with the joy, right? Not with the joy. So actually it's the, the way how they uh, decide, right? So what I want to say is uh, the third function is the right uh, life continuance, right? Life continuance. And the last one is the death, uh, death function. Death function. So the moment you die, so if you uh, if you was born as a result of the first type of kusala karma, wholesome deed. The moment you die, you will have knowledge or wisdom, right? You will die with the wisdom. But when you die with the wisdom, of course you can, uh, you can honestly, you can prepare, you, know, you can prepare for your death uh, better, right? Better. But when you, uh, when you have a rebirth in this life, it will change. It will change again, right? So therefore. Relinking consciousness and life continuance consciousness and death consciousness are the same. So when you when we uh, so when we die, thinking and experiencing the first type of wholesome consciousness, then we will have in this life, and we will have our relinking consciousness will be the first type, the first type of sense fear resident consciousness. Then uh, life continuum also will be the same. And depth consciousness also will be the same. Okay, question. Bhante, I'd like to know where, where, where does the consciousness store? Is it in the cells of our body? Where, uh, where? Question, question. <laughs> the, repeat the question. Bhante, I'd like to know where are the, all these consciousness being stored? Is it in the cell of the body? Actually, uh, the question is uh, where these consciousness are stored. Actually, um, I have explained uh, when I explain about my process. It doesn't exist anywhere. It doesn't exist in anywhere. It arises depending on causes. The mind doesn't exist in our mind, in our body. Sorry, the mind doesn't exist in our body or in our brain. The brain, our body, are the condition. So
So I see somebody with my own eye, right? My eye is one condition. Also, that person also one condition. If the room is dark, cannot see, right? Cannot see. The light also one condition. Then I have a good brain. The brain also may be one of the condition. A heart also one of the condition. So many conditions, right? Normally the Buddha give only example, three conditions. Something we see, eye, and consciousness arise, right? Only two, 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 two condi conditions. So according to Buddhism, according to Buddhism, mind or consciousness does it exist anywhere. Based on the conditions, right? So therefore, so when the Buddha teach, the Buddha give all these conditions. The condition outside, condition inside. So that became trap base, trap base. And six pigs inside, eye, ear, nose, turn the body and mind. And six pigs outside. Things we see, things we hear, the object, six objects, right? So therefore, this consciousness is not so stored anywhere. Stored anywhere, right? So therefore, most importantly, um, as a, I think as a um, Chinese living in Singapore, so they have a wrong perception that Nibbana exists somewhere. Because it's come from the uh, I would say that Tau Taoists uh, and also um, Mahayana, even Mahayana, they have a, such a wrong view. Nibbana exists somewhere, right? Nibbana doesn't exist an, uh, anywhere. Thing that we have to experience with the mind, right? Not normal mind, with the supramundane consciousness. So we have eight type of supramundane consciousness. So therefore, we don't have those type of consciousness, we cannot experience. Very difficult to understand, right? So therefore, when the Buddha explained the nature of Nibbana, he used so many methods. So the best method is uh, showing with the negative. If you do not have Loba, Dosa, Moha, that is Nibbana. Normally we are full of Loba. Full of toes and more. <laughs> so therefore, the more you can reduce the amount of these negative emotions, the more you are close to, uh, the closer to Nibbana, right? Closer to Nibbana. For those who has less anger, uh, more happiness, right? More happiness. Actually, is it closer to Nibbana, right? The more you, you are greed, you are craving, your attachment is lesser, you are close to, closer to Nepal. Right? Question? Any question? Okay. Black? Especially in Bidama, we always use uh, uh, three type of uh, signs. So the moment we are going to die, we see one of them. One of them. So the first one is the um, karma. So actually, we will see uh, the moment we are going to die, we see if our a, a whole sun deed, a kusala karma is very strong, we are likely to see whole sun karma, right? Whole sun antipathies. 
Well, I have done a lot of good things, right? You will see it. You will see it. And if you do a lot of bad deeds or bad things, of course, likely to experience those moments, right? And the last one is a uh, Katini made. No, sorry. Kama. So there is a Kama. Kama. Kama ni made. Kama ni made is a. Just as you said, seeing a white light, right? So if you see white light, that means it's a good, good sign. Eh? <laughs> a good sign. <laughs> good sign. You know, sometimes, um, uh, normally the moment you die, some people may, uh, some people may see. I always give a uh, very, very good example. For those who are drinking all the time, Likely, likely to see the body. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking body, right? So normally you drink the alcohol. Alcohol. Instead of that, you see the body. <laughs> it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign, right? Some people who are killing with the can, they may see the can. Like this. So these are one type of signs, right? Second type of signs. And then the light, actually I haven't heard of the white light or dark light. Eh? So anyway, this is, um, the last one is called Katini Maida. Uh, if you are, if you have done a lot of good deed, the dying moment you may see where you are going to reborn. If you are, Reborn in Singapore, <laughs> and you will see something, uh, some remark or, <laughs> eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this. You will see, or Singapore flag, huh? like something like this. You will see it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, like this. Uh. So that is called Katini made, right? Katini made where you're going to born. So it's a three type of sign, right? But it's according to a Vidama. But too much, uh, do not honestly, do not rely on that, uh, that concept. It's a little bit dangerous, right? But you must know it. So if you have a lot of good deed, if you, done, if you have done a lot of good deed, of course, no need to worry, right? No need to worry. But trying to be mindful. So mindfulness is very important. So the moment you, the moment you are going to die, mindful. Try to be mindful, right? So if you are mindful, that means you have good it. Mindfulness is good it, right? Any question? The last question. Okay. Sorry? <laughs> 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 Normally, uh, it depends on our volition, right? Volition is very important. The moment you donate something, if, you, if your motivation or volition is good, of course, it creates a good deed. It's a very important one. Okay, thank you for coming to the class. So let's close our class. Oh. Uh, excuse me, can you, can you sit down for a while? <laughs> Announcement. Hey, sorry, I can go for a while. Uh, this coming this up, we need some uh, volunteers because MEDF is given uh, a task of washing utensils uh, on the uh, this up day. In fact, three cluster uh, given this job. One is the Sunday Dharma class, one is the police group, 
and the other one is MPF. So at present, I only got five volunteers who volunteer to come up with the machine. So I hope uh, I can get another five from this class, then we can submit the list to them. It's on this Saturday itself. I think the uh, cleaning, sh the washing should be should start in, uh, after or uh, after lunch or before. The lunch will start at about 11.30. Anybody interested can just give me a give me, give me your name. You can uh, submit to the what uh, email, Abhidhamma, the email, uh, that with your name and your uh, contact number and the t-shirt size. We are giving out t-shirts to the volunteers. Okay? Thank you. Okay, it is a good chance. Eh? If you are interest, interested, please, uh, please send email. Sangami Mansaranam 